Um, I have a video of Michael Irving that we That hurt. <laughs> Here we go. Damn. Fucking wind. Ow. Who? Well, good morning, good people. Mark Holmes here, of course. Well, Joe Boo is down at the Red Brick House, but we do have Joe Bear here holding down the fort. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. So let's get open for business here and let's wake up the football gods. I hope everybody's having a great Monday morning. It's the beginning of the second week of the NFL season being over. It is already week number two of the offseason, man. Time is flying by. Before you know it, it will be actually the beginning of the NFL season. <sighs> um, yeah. So, here's where we have to understand. Right now is when teams are being built for winning the Super Bowl. This is where you start staking your claim to be one of those teams. The Cowboys, they've been, they've won 36 games in the last three years. Probably more regular season wins than maybe anybody else, maybe than uh, Kansas City. The problem is when we finally get to the playoffs, we choke. I, I, I can't put it any other way. I can't put it any other way. For whatever reason, it's we're just not there. Now, one of the reasons is, we don't have as much talent as everybody else. You can't say that about the Green Bay game. We just got beat. But when you look at the teams that are making it to the NFC and AFC championships, the Super Bowls and things like that, you see more complete teams. I'm just it being realistic. I, I, I know it's easy for the casual fan to just say it's just the quarterback. But it's not just the quarterback. You can see how Cleveland took Joe Flacco on a ride. Joe Flacco was, uh, his numbers were okay. They weren't anything to write home about, but that defense helped to lead them as far as they could go. At that point, that's where you needed Joe Flacco to be more than what he was. But the point being is you need to have the defense together. You know, we should all recognize that. You need your quarterback to play better. You need your running back to play better. You need your wide receivers to catch the football. You need everybody to play better in the playoffs. Now, call it what you will. Call it that the Cowboys are head cases or whatever. But Micah Parsons kind of called out the Cowboys for the culture. The culture. And let's be real. Micah Parsons, who says he wants to be a Cowboy for life, he is the de facto leader on the, that defense, if not on the team. And... He needs to look at himself as well as everybody else, of course, to say we all need to play better. But this is where he's kind of calling out Jerry Jones and the culture. And I don't know that at this point you can change the culture because you're living in the culture. You're, the fact that you're here with Stephen A. Smith doing this podcast and Stephen A. Smith is on your podcast and things, that's part of the culture that we have that, of course, everybody's wanting to live above their means. Now, Stephen A. Smith and Micah Parsons in what was released, of course, on Sunday. Um, I'm sorry, today's, yeah, today's Monday. Um, was released on Saturday is very, very interesting listening to the whole thing. It's about an hour long, so if you got some time, listen to it because there are some really great things on here. What first thing is, for Eagle fans, sorry, Micah Parsons wants to be a Cowboy for life. He admitted he didn't want to play in, 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 in Pennsylvania. He wanted to get away from home. He wanted to get away from his people and everything else. And I dare say, as he talks about his contract and getting paid um, on here, he's not in a hurry. He knows that if it's not this year, it's next year. It's just more money, um, so to speak. And I'm not mad at a player for wanting to get paid for what they do. You are literally risking your life. But he wants to be a cowboy for life. And you have to understand part of the reason why you want to be a cowboy for life is 
if Micah Parsons was never drafted by the Cowboys, per se, and he was drafted by the Eagles, would Micah Parsons be able to do what he's doing on his podcast and things like that? Just think about that for a second. If Micah Parsons was drafted by the Cleveland Browns, a la he's um, you know, defensive player of the year, like Miles Garrett, does he have the platform that he does in Dallas? Probably not. I mean, you don't see Miles Garrett having his podcasts and live streams and everything else and everybody wanting to have, you know, have him on or be on his show, right? He is part of this culture that will get you more. But listen to him in his own words because there are some very important pieces in this that Micah Parsons has to say. Wants to get paid, of course, and of course, wants to be a Dallas Cowboy for life. Wants to win a Super Bowl here and wants to change the culture. And that's why I say it is more culture and cultural than it is uh, players. You know, you. I, I just think nowadays you got guys trying to get paid, guys trying to, you know, they want to live, they want to live like rock stars, you know, they want to, you know, you got guys that live above the star. They want to live up to the star. You know, guys like me, I try to hide from the star, you know, on a get, playing field, I own it. I'm like, yeah, like this is me. Like I love it. Like but off the field, you ain't got time for all that. Yeah, I want to be left alone. I want to be quiet. Like I like to just be to myself. Well, you know, some guys like to live up to it. Like they like to live up to that name. You know. So I think it's. I really do believe it's more cultural in how guys think. Cause you know, everyone's like, everyone's cool when it's up when they up 14. But when it's like down 14, everybody looking to the left, everybody looking to the right, mm-hmm. everybody looks like. How do you doubt those who think the way you want to think and those who don't before they get into a cowboy uniform before they get into the same locker room as you because that's a tough thing to discover what did you say i would say the film don't lie though you can look at the film and say man he's giving everything he got he ain't Mm -hmm. taking no plays off he ain't letting that person Mm -hmm. uh mess with him or beat him like he just i think the film and then you could talk to somebody you could tell how you like to live? Like, like everybody like to party, get a drink, you know, air and there, you know, the right setting. But you want to be twenty four seven, like pressure though. And I asked that question strictly as a cowboy, because clearly y'all are the most valued franchise, worth over nine billion. Um, everybody looks at y'all and they see what they see. Uh, the pub, the publicity, the hype. It's the Dallas Cowboys. That to me. It's why I laugh at the fans, because to me, the fans are y'all biggest impediment because they put so much pressure on y'all because they act so abnormal compared to other fan bases that it puts immense pressure on y'all. Everybody can't handle it. And that's why I usually well, know that y'all gonna fall well, because of those fans. Well, what they say, right? Pressure is a privilege, right? Mm-hmm. I say it, it's, it's, it's not a right. It's a privilege. Okay. It's a privilege to wear the stuff. And I feel like. Every time I step on the field, and you can ask anybody, any player I went against, any coach, say you, you play the game the right way. Right. So I don't really think it's the pressure. I think it's more just, like I said, it's here. Like, and like, cause at the end of the day, when you in that game and you worry about everything else was going on, then is you really focused on the game? Is your mind really right? You feel me? Like, every time you step on the field, it should be about winning. Yeah. Emmitt Smith had such strong comments about you guys. It should well, always be Smith, about what talked about his disappointment, talked about a lot of different things. You heard what he had to say about you guys. Your thoughts. I mean, I, it, you can't be mad about how people, everybody's opinionated, right? You know that. Um, and he's qualified. Yeah, he's qualified. Uniform, a superstar, three Leading rusher. No question. I mean, I'm not mad at him it's about the comments. I don't take it personal. I just think I take it more personal as like, you're right. We gotta be better. Like, you like you gotta take constructive criticism from greatness. They just they were just at a standard that we gotta get everybody else too. You know, back then it wasn't mm-hmm. about money, it wasn't about they didn't have all the now some of them did about the extra stuff. But you know, they the game was different twenty years ago. You know, it's a whole different game. Thirty years ago. I would say this. 
I think that when you think about Emmett, you think about Troy, you think about Playmaker, you think about Charles Healy and all of these guys, mm-hmm. especially those first three that I mentioned, what resonates with me is when they arrived, when they first arrived on the Cowboys, Cowboys just there. They built that. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Which means y'all got a chance I, to build it. And I think we slowly are building it. We keep, we, each year we get another guy. Think about how Deron Bland stepped up. Now we're going to get Deron Bland, Trayvon. I mean, you got Hooker, you got Olsen, you got me. Uh, you got Sam Williams, you got Dak, you still got C.D. Lamb that they're going to give an mm-hmm. extension to. You got Ferguson, you get the young cat, Tyler Smith. And you building this dynamic roster, now it's like, now it's the question is, and you know, I, and I think a lot of it is like, we got all these vets that's been there so long and they got, they think they got this idea of what, what everything is. And um, I think it's time for the, the younger guys to rise. I got an interesting question for you, Mike Foster, because, you know, no matter how much, you know, I can't stand Cowboy fans. I got love for you, bro. And I got to tell you, I think you deserve to be paid. Mm-hmm. You obviously a three-time Pro Bowler. In your, in your four seasons of the NFL, you got 40 and a half sacks. You got 89 quarterback hits. You're three-time Pro Bowler. You've been doing your thing, no doubt about it. You're three-plus years in the league. I'm looking at you, and I'm saying this brother speaks up for CeeDee Lamb. I saw him on your podcast. You was with your brother. You all root for him. He's about to get his contract. We know that Dak Prescott has to get some money. But my concern is that I hope they don't get in the way of you getting your money. No. Now, I mean, have you thought about that at all? No. Have you thought about that? You know, I'm, you know for me, everyone's always worried about what's meant for you is meant for you. If I'm meant to get it, I'm going to get it. You know? I think Steven and Jerry, and they want to take care of their guys, but they want to take care of the right guys, and they got to do things strategically, you know, how to how to cap hit. I don't know how how it truly works, only they do. So, you know, if they call my number and say, hey, we ready, we ready. But um, if not, I'm going to put another Pro Bowl year. It only gets more expensive, right? It, it, it only gets more expensive, assuming you don't get hurt. Football's a very violent sport. It's a very physical game. I mean, if it's, if that's guys playing, like, I can't, I can't play, like, you know, like that. I'm gonna play how I play, and if something happens. But they can after March, they could sign you. They could choose to franchise tag you in the 2025. Mm-hmm. I mean, would you would you take that? Would you still go out on the field? Some pe- some players would sit out. What, what, what would you do? I think it would be too expensive to do that. My fifth year option is already a, a top three franchise tag. Mm. So if they did that again, I would be making, and it just goes against the cap more. I don't think that, like they would do that. And you've been on the record stating, quote, you want to be a cowboy for life. Yeah. Man, where are you from? Ain't you from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania? Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Ain't that the closest Just there yesterday. Life? Yeah. I mean, it's like, you know, I'm sure Eagles were my, why do I don't want to be a cowboy for life? Because I, like, I called on the star. I called him. I said, Dallas, come get me. You called Dallas. I, call, I called the Dallas. I, when I was in pre he called Cowboys. I was watching the Cowboys. I said, bro, I want to be. And I played in the Cotton Bowl in Dallas. And I was like, I want to be back in Dallas. So you went to the Cotton Bowl in Dallas. Yeah. But you from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. That's two hours from Philadelphia. And you called the Cowboys to say you wanted to be with Dell? Yeah. Why? Why would you do that to yourself? That's what God told me. Mm. I'm going to win the championship in Dallas. I, I'm telling you right now. I, like, I, listen. I told I told everyone that I wanted to be a Dallas Cowboys, and I feel like my vision it is is not for no reason. Like mm-hmm. I'm going to be a champion, and I believe you got to fail to win. And I failed Amen. a couple times, and that's okay. But each time I learn now, now I know what I exactly what I have to do to get people around me better, to get people around you better. Yeah. How about getting the right people around? You can do that, but sometimes you got what you got. You got to get them better. And you're not worried at all about getting on that field before you get paid? No, no. If I do what I'm supposed to, I'm going to get paid. There you go. If I do what I'm supposed to do, I'm going to get paid. So that's interesting to say the least. Listen to Micah Parsons. Um, he's not worried about getting paid. You know, he's. I, I think he honestly knows that winning cures all. And I like the fact that he's kind of owning up to the culture. And the question becomes is, will they do anything about it? Here's where um, that's part of the equation. 
That's only part of the equation. And now it's also silly season. Silly season being that now you're hearing about, you know, all kinds of trade proposals and stuff. And I've heard a couple people kind of say this to me. Oh, man, I've heard that the Cowboys are interested in getting Joey Bosa. Well, in some regards, I guess you could say that that would be a Cowboy type thing. Because Joey Bosa, the last two years, has been injured mostly. He's only played 13 games in the last two seasons and had eight and a half sacks. And has got a bloated contract. He's 28 years old. So, of course, he's one. This is one of those cases to me. And I'm not saying that Joey Bosa is not still a good player and, and a, would be an upgrade. But, see, here's the thing that happens to us too often is you hear a name player that you know and you recognize. You recognize, oh, my God, you've seen great things that Joey Bosa has done throughout his career. In 2016, he had 10 and a half sacks. In 2017, he had 12 and a half. 2018, five and a half, followed up by 11 and a half sacks. In 2019, seven and a half in 2020, and 10 and a half sacks in 2021. So in your mind, you're seeing that. You're not seeing the 22 season where he had two and a half and only played in five games. You're not remembering that he played in nine games last year with six and a half sacks. Still really good, but you now have to say, is which Joey Bosa are we getting? Are we getting the older guy who's going to be 29, who's got a big salary and has been injured a lot the last two years, or are we getting the Joey Bosa that was like, you know, 22 sacks in two seasons or, you know, 40 sacks in four years? That's that's the question that you have to answer. And I don't have the answer. But of course, you know, you're hearing people basically say that, hey, here it is. You know, Joey Bosa, you know, that's the Cowboys. Here's another crazy one here. These are ones that sound great if you could get it to happen. Um, but I don't see this one happening and let's listen in here we're, we're gonna hear all kinds of crazy proposals and trades and all this that and the other when we know that the cowboys won't do jack cowboy fans listen up listen to this Are one you included in that give me trade number two brian this is win-win brandon cooks going from dallas to the new york jets and cj mosley going from the jets to the cowboys hell no. this really works well for both teams Look, the Jets need outside speed outside of Garrett Wilson with Aaron Rodgers coming back. They have depth in their front seven. The Cowboys desperately need yes. size and yes. speed at middle linebacker. Love it. I think Leighton Van Der Esch, A leader get, in the locker room. Uh, and absolutely. All those things. This is really going to help Hell. both teams. Why would the Jets do that? That is the leader. That's their captain. That's Captain Kurt right there. For Brandon Cooks, I'll give you that for C.D. Lamb. But I'm not no. giving – Brandon, listen, Brandon Cook going to be – How are you going to score if you're the Jets? Brandon Cook's going to be available anyway. You know how many free agent uh, – Brandon Cook's for C.J. Mosley. You, you think I'm going to give up my leader for somebody that's there? Nah, man, this dude yeah, – he's been on 20 teams for a reason. Who? Brandon what? Cooks. Yeah, I mean, he's a good player, but – He's forced touchdowns. I'm not giving up my captain when I can go get Ridley. I can go get, you know, Gabe Davis. You know, Garrett Wilson is, is, is number one. Or oh, I'm shit, I'm trying to trade for I'll, now I'll give I'll give the Raiders CJ Mosey for Devontae Adams. Yeah. But I'm not doing that for you. I need a higher end guy than Brandon Cooks. I, right, I, I love that. I, you know what? <laughs> All right, just hang in there for a second. Okay. I, I love that Watson idea. 152 and tackles and a half sack and an Giants interception. Now this is another one of these crazy out. ones. If you're the Cleveland <sighs> Browns, you have Dorian Thompson Robinson. You have Joe Flacco, and now a 27-year-old Daniel Jones who has one year left of guaranteed money for $36 million and an enormous amount of flexibility moving forward. And if you're the Giants, you're getting Deshaun Watson, who's Are you? 29, Are you? who's making $36 Are you? million dollars a year for the next These year are crazy. and a second-round pick. And to me, you need a front-line difference-making quarterback. Because, Bart, right now, if you're the Giants, how in the world do you win the NFC when you have to beat San Francisco, Green Bay, Dallas, Philly, and Detroit. With Daniel and I, Jones. Right. Yeah, with Daniel Jones. So to me, Deshaun Watson hasn't played well the last couple of years, but he has a high upside, and he's only 29 years old. So, so, so. Who if, says no? If I'm if Giants. I, yeah. If, if, is who? But first Why? Of all, because if 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 uh, you it's get crazy. Jones for 34 million or whatever next year, I mean, Powell's are in New York. If <laughs> if if um if Daniel Jones can't let's keep it to football. If Daniel oh, right, Jones can't right. play, then you're out of it after this year. If Deshaun Watson can't play, 
then yeah. you have two more years after this year of guaranteed, guaranteed money. Uh, it's dollars. stupid. You are screwed. Daniel Jones may not be the only one out after this year if they don't win. If I'm, if, I, if I'm Cleveland. What have we seen from Deshaun Watson? The last, I, like, like 2020 was the last time he was a difference-making quarterback. Okay, mm-hmm. okay, so Daniel Jones has gotten destroyed in this division. Sacked, hit. He got a bad neck, bad back. What he got? What, what's the what's the what's the lower extremity? <laughs> what he hurt this year? The knee, the ACL. ACL. Yeah. And I'm gonna make him play the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, <laughs> this is I'm gonna make him play, play the Baltimore Ravens. But also have the Ray Thompson, Thompson Robinson. Wait, he got a bad neck. <laughs> <laughs> Daniel Jones, listen. The most physical division in all of football. You're, You're going to send Daniel Jones there. Can, if Andrew Berry can trade Deshaun Watson, I, I, I get that. Offseason, they should put him in a Hall of Fame. And we've seen that. There you go. We saw Brock Osweiler get traded with a second round pick yeah. in the cap room. This is a little bit of a different variation. All I'm saying is, so if there, you're the Browns, hold on. If you're the Browns last year, you went to the playoffs yep. with three different quarterbacks. Yeah. All I'm saying, you have depth with Dorian Thompson Robinson, yeah. a really good young quarterback. Joe Flacco, who was a comeback player of the year. You're going to use them all. Jones. Again, you don't have to sell me on it. <laughs> <the> Browns in. <laughs> You're right. Okay. I think it's the Giants, Giants. That, would not, that would not do this for a number of reasons. Mm-hmm. But actually, so, the football and the finances – being the most prompt. So if you're the New York Giants, how do you win the division? Who are you winning the division with? That, that's interesting because you, you beg I'm, the question. I'm, I'm drafting a quarterback. Does, yeah. do, do they need to move on from Daniel Jones? Yes. I, listen, this was a four-year deal, but it's really a two-year deal. So right. they can get out of that. So why would I, I can be out of that pain before. Why don't I come on and take that type take of Take on Deshaun Watson. Guaranteed when I can be out of the Daniel Jones sweepstakes Guys, in just next year. They're going to year three in New York. This yeah. is a huge year for the New York Giants for yeah. Joe Shea and Brian Dayball. How do they, they probably won the mm-hmm. playoff game. They're not winning the division. They, they, it's not their time. They still have to do some program building. But don't you think Joe Shane and those guys need to shake the thing? But if they don't win this season, I'm they're gone. tight on you. Know how New but, York is. But, but they, but they won a playoff game just a that season was, ago. Giant fans are like, when was that? It feels like two, <laughs> three years ago. The last team that won anything with Deshaun Watson was Clemson. I'm right. sorry, like, like how is Deshaun Watson the answer right now? Like, he hasn't we looked good. We haven't seen it. Wow. Three, four listen, years. Listen, they, they, listen, the Giants do a better job in trading for Justin Fields. In. Let's, let's, if that's what we're doing. If we there you go. All right, I'm going to leave it right there because I, I got things I got to do, man. I got to change the garbage disposal and I got to get back down the road. And we can have that discussion all day long because that's a whole nother ball of wax when you start thinking about quarterbacks that have been, you know, thought to be the guy. Deshaun Watson in 2020 was thought to be the guy and a difference maker and everything else. Got the big contract track and then doesn't show we thought that Carson Wentz well we can go we can go down the line on these things of one hit wonders um that you know have a great season everybody thinks that they're the guy and then they go back to being the guy they were which was not good all right good people I will see you guys on the road I hope you all have a wonderful day and um be safe out there peace out our coach here is always a